Today, I'm going to give you 20 reasons why the OnePlus 12 is better than the S23 Ultra. Now, I already know there's going to be a bunch of haters out there. Samsung is the best. There's no way this, this, could, this could be better. But did you have both, you know, phones? Mm -hmm. You know, did you have, did you ever use the OnePlus 12? Now, I know some things on this video are going to be subjective. I, I already understand that. You know, because it's my, this is based on my opinion, my experience with both devices. Okay. Also, but there are also going to be some things that are just clear factual. Mm -hmm. They're not subjective. They're just factual. So you decide for yourself, which ones is subjective, which ones is factual. All right. So let's get started. All right. Now, first of all, I want to make very clear. Both of these are flagship top tier devices. And both of these devices are great and I love them both. Okay. But in my opinion there, there's a lot of things about the one plus 12 that to me are better than that of the S 23 ultra. So let's get started. Number one, the price <laughs> that is so obvious. Now, if you don't have nothing to trade, you're looking at, you know, something expensive like 1200 bucks. Or maybe you can get it renewed on Amazon. But besides all of that, we're talking about brand new here. Okay. With the one plus 12, we're not talking about renewed. We're not talking about used and, and all this other stuff. No, we're talking about brand new $699 for 12 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage, 699. Okay. Next 749 for 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. Next, $849 for 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of storage, which kills this S23 Ultra when it comes to price and overall value and what you're getting. Just kills it. So when it comes to price, you're getting way more value and a better price with the OnePlus 12. Number two, presentation. Now, this is something that just doesn't matter to everybody. However, it matters to me. I want value for my money. So when it comes to the OnePlus 12, you're getting 100, uh, 100 watt charging brick in the box. Unlike Samsung devices, when you get basically nothing except a charging cable, which I think is an absolute joke. For, for, the, for them to do that when they charge you over a thousand dollars for a device that is unacceptable with the one plus 12 you're also getting a pre-installed screen protector which is something samsung used to give us but they don't give us that anymore you're also getting a case in the box now samsung was not known for giving cases in the box i've never gotten a case in a box with a samsung premium device so I'm not going to talk negative about that, but with mid range and budget phones, they gave them a case. Now, I don't know why they gave them a case, but did not give their premium devices a case. I don't understand that, but also keep in mind outside of this country, like outside of North America, I believe in other markets, they did offer a case. I've, I've heard that before, but just not in this country, not in North America, no case. All right. Number two, design. Now, this, of course, is something that is subjective. Now, for me, I like the design of the OnePlus 12 better. It just stands out more. I just, it's, this is just like, when you see this for me, it's just like, wow, look at me. <laughs> you know, it just, it just stands out. This is more of a laid back look, not a bad look. Don't get me wrong, but it's more laid back. It's more type, I say more business-like type look but this one really just it, it just pops so i prefer the design of the one plus 12. number four build quality and what i mean by that because both of these have the same build gorilla glass victus 2. so when it comes to that that's even but what i'm talking about is how does the device feel in my hand and when it comes to overall how it feels in my hand, which one is comfortable, it's by, it's easily the OnePlus 12. It's just super comfortable 
in my hand because you know it's rounded in the corners it's nice and round it has a nice thickness and it just feels super comfortable in my hand of course you know with samsung devices they're very boxy and you know the corners are very pointy so when i'm holding it it stabs me into my hand so it's not a comfortable device to use uh without a case now with a case not not a problem there's there's not a comfortable it's not a comfortable issue but everybody don't like to use cases on their phone some people like to rock without a case but me i'm a case guy but there are times when I just want to take the case off, enjoy the, you know, the premium feel, the build quality, and this is comfortable in my hands. The S23 Ultra is not. Number five, the OnePlus 12 has an alert slider. Now, I know everybody don't care about this either. I like this though, because you can go from ring to vibrate to silent. I like that convenience. Because not only do they have this, but of course my Vivo X Note has it. And also iPhone has been using an alert slider for years. But I like the fact that you can go from ring to vibrate to silent. You get that option. Say if you have the phone in your pocket and you're somewhere and you're in a meeting, your phone start going off. You could just reach in your pocket and just, just go right to either the vibrate or the silent. I like that. That's something Samsung should consider putting on their devices. Number six, the OnePlus 12 has an IR blaster. This is something that the S23 Ultra does not have. Now, something that Samsung used to put on their devices, and I know some people out there going to say, oh, you got smart things, but everybody doesn't have a Samsung television. And what if you go out in different places traveling and you're someplace where there's an LG phone, I mean, LG TV or different type of manufacturer manufacturers when it comes to the tv you're not going to be able to use it smart things on that but with the one plus it has a universal remote control so it will work on any manufacturer let me turn this brightness down a little bit so it's not too bright for the for the screen and also let me just show you something real quick what makes this ir blaster even more special it's not just about tvs look at all of these things that you could use with it Listen, look, you're not doing that with smart things. So it's not just about TVs, as you can see here. OK, without me even going through all of it, it's not just about TVs. So I like the fact that it has an IR blaster. Now, there is a app that I just saw. Um, I think I was I just read up on it last week, but it's still not a universal remote. But you can. It's basically like an IR blaster, which you can use not just on a Samsung TV, but any TV, but you can't use it for all those other things that the OnePlus 12 does. So that, uh, let me let me show you that app really quick in case y'all are curious to what that app is. Let me see, did I put it? Okay, I did put it inside here. Let me get to it. it called, it's called TV Remote. TV Remote Control. Just found out about this. Oh, I hate these uh, ads. These ads are so annoying. <laughs> they really are. See, you see it automatically hooked up to my Samsung TV, but that's about all you get. OK, it's not a um, see smart TV remote, IR TV remote, but you're not going to be um, you're not going to be using this for all those different things that I talked about. Now, see, I'm not going to go into all of this, but. You can't, it's not a universal, I mean, it's universal, but not in the sense where you can use all those other things on, you know, that this thing could use. It's just not the same thing, but it's cool. When you go into, you click on here. Well, let me turn the brightness down. I'm noticing that the brightness is really high. That should be a little bit better. So you can see I can use this on my TV, no problem, but it's still, you can't control all those other things that you can control with this. It's just not the same. Well, I'm not going to stay there because it's taking too long. I'm just going to keep, just going to keep it moving here. Let me, um, I think I got to get that extra brightness on. Let me turn that off. Okay. All right. So that should be a little better. All right. So let's keep it moving. Sorry. I didn't mean to slow things down doing that. All right. Number seven, the one plus 12 has a better face unlock. 
Look, anybody that's going to be honest that been using Samsung products and especially their premium devices with the face mm-hmm. unlock, you already know that the face unlock is just okay. Okay. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it don't. It, I don't like that. I want consistency. You're not going to have a problem with that with the OnePlus 12. This thing works every single time. I, n- I don't even have to ever use, get it. Half the time, I don't get a chance to even touch the fingerprint sensor because I got it set for a raise to wake. So as soon as I get the phone anywhere near my face, it automatically opens before I can even get my thumb near the fingerprint sensor. So this is 100% accurate. This is some tiny. And, and it just it just says it is what it is. Doesn't matter what Samsung device I've used, the face unlock is still suspect. Number eight, the OnePlus 12 has a better fingerprint sensor. Now, of course, there's some out, go, some out there going to say, well, but this has the ultrasonic, so it's more secure. Listen, both of these fingerprint sensors are secure. The OnePlus 12 is definitely secure because I can use it with my banking app and any other things that are, you know, requires high security. So, that ultrasonic is just overhyped, honestly, to be, you know, it's just overhyped. But what I mean by this being better, in my opinion, first of all, it's just, it's faster That's to begin with. I mean, just show you that it's just faster. I mean, seriously, it's just faster. Boom. It just pops right open. Also, I don't know if you can see, let me sh- get a little closer. You can see you get a little a- animation there. And I like that. Now, some may say you get an animation with the Samsung. Yes, but the difference is here, you get no haptic feedback, okay? And you only get one animation. And it's it's not as fast. It's just not. You know, it's just not as fast. Not as fast. And with this one, you get different animations. Let me show you really quick. Let's go in here and go to, I think that is home screen and lock screen, I believe. Nope, nope, it's not that one. Wallpapers and style. There you go, always on display. Let me see, fingerprint animation. Look at all these different type of fingerprint animations that you get. Seven, seven different animations. I don't know why Samsung can't implement something like that on their devices, especially even through good lock, but nope. Haptic feedback different animations and this is just faster so this has the better fingerprint sensor number nine <clears throat> the one plus 12 has a better always on display now i already know a lot of people are gonna <laughs> i could already hear him now no samsung look samsung used to have the best uh i uh, always on display not anymore let me show you what i mean Okay, I can't show you real I can't show you at the moment what I mean. Hold up. I can't show you. Hold up. I can show you. With my now see this. Let me shut it off. It's smaller, but I can still show. I don't know why that popped back on like that. See? See how those are colored? Those uh icons. No longer. As you can see. Everything is just white, except sometimes the Facebook is colored. Sometimes it's not. It's just not consistent. But everything had its own color with the old always on display. With the new always on display, everything is white. You see how small the notifications are? They were much bigger with the old um, always on display. They were much bigger. Even on air, it's bigger. You can see it. It's big. It's bigger. So you're not getting that anymore. Now, the thing that I figured out and I was real frustrated with the last video I did when I went on a rant about the always on display is that it kept changing colors. I hated that. I figured out I went into good lock. I figured out how to finally get it just to stay white and actually and all and I'm actually also to get brighter. So what I did for those of you that may not be familiar with it, let me just show you really quick. <clears throat> so I went into good lock. Let me find that. And then I went down to where it says lock star. Yeah. Lock star. You click on lock star. So what I had to do basically is with this first one, turn it on. 
But then with the second one, turn it off. And then when I scrolled up, I saw always on display auto brightness. Now, let me say this. When I was looking in all this, before I even did that video, when I went on a rant, I was doing all of this. I went in here. This either, either I just didn't swipe up here or it didn't move. I think I was doing this. And just like this, it, it wasn't moving. Like, I don't even know. I think, yeah, I kept sliding up and all I kept getting is add widget and add sticker. I was just getting this. I wasn't getting, I wasn't, uh, discard that. Okay. I wasn't getting this, what you see down here. See, now it just went away. See, this is just frustrating. I don't know why this thing don't work correctly. So you keep doing this and you keep sliding up and the thing won't go up. Like, I don't, I just, I don't know what's going on with this system. It's just crazy. So I kept trying to do this, but nothing would happen, right? So I never saw. Oh, you said auto layout. I meant save. I never saw this down here. See, now I can't even get it to come up for some reason. It now it's just acting crazy. See, I can't even get it to come up. But it was down here where it says auto brightness and all that. But I couldn't get this to move. As you can see, I'm doing it now. I'm moving my finger. I'm trying to get it to move. It won't move. It won't move. So this keeps popping up. So y'all can see for yourself live the, the problems I was having. This is why I was so frustrated thinking that I can't change this. And people kept telling me, go and lock, go and um, um, good lock, and it'll change. And it's all in it. But when you keep, when you're doing this, and nothing changes and nothing comes up, you're going to think you're going to think that you can't change it. See, it's down here, but for some reason, I just can't get this to respond. I just can't get it to respond. So, but I finally did get it to work. You know, I did see that where now it's a lot brighter, still not as bright as it used to be, but it's still a lot brighter. But the fact that the, the notifications are not colored anymore, and that they're so small, I don't like that. I don't like that. Samsung should have just left it alone. They should have just left it alone. Now, the reason why I like OnePlus is a little better. First of all, the icons are bigger. They're easier to see. And this gets adequately bright. And also, this bear, some, it's animated when you uh, turn the screen on for the first time. He kind of moves a little bit. And I like that. But the main thing, really, for me, is that the icons are just bigger. With the Samsung, you can see how small they are. They're really small. I don't know why they made them this small. I mean, even if they took away the color, why did you why did you make them so teeny? You know, I could easily see what these are. So in my, you know, in my opinion, the OnePlus 12 always on display is better. But I'm glad y'all saw that live. Why I had so many issues trying to change it. Because for some reason, that screen just keeps freezing up when it comes to that particular um, app. And I just couldn't get it to scroll up to see that it had an auto brightness there. I, I just It just wouldn't move. And you see, it still wouldn't move. So I don't know what the problem is. All right. I didn't mean to stay that long on that. But I just had to show y'all the problems I was going. That's why I went on such a rant in that video. Number 10, the OnePlus 12 has a better display. Think about this, 1,600 nits of sustained brightness. You're only getting 1,200 nits of sustained, of sustained brightness on the S23 Ultra. Also, the OnePlus 12 has a 510 pixel density. You're only getting 500 pixel density on the S23 Ultra. And also, 4,500 nits peak brightness. I believe you're only getting, I think, um, 2,000 or 2,600 nits which is still bright, don't get me wrong, but this still gets considerably brighter. And also with the OnePlus 12, you do get the image sharpener and the video color boost. Now, let me just make this clear. Both of these displays are absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> I mean, you ain't gonna go wrong with either one, but this just gets brighter. And if you're a person that really likes your display really, really bright, the OnePlus 12 is the one you want, but both displays are absolutely gorgeous so no issue with either device you know either display but you're going to get a higher pixel 
uh, pixel density with the OnePlus 12. You get that image sharpening and also you get Dolby Vision. I forgot to mention that. No Dolby Vision on the S23 Ultra and the sustained brightness is much higher at 1600 nits. Next, number 11. The OnePlus 12, in my opinion, has better dual stereo speakers. Now, that's just to my ears. Everybody's ears are different. You know, you like certain sounds. Let me just say it. both of these have excellent dual stereo speakers. They really do. Sometimes, depending on what I'm watching and how it was recorded, sometimes I like the sound of the S23 Ultra better. And there are other times when I like the sound of the One OnePlus 12 better. For me, the OnePlus 12 has more of a more of a stereo sound and it has a little heavier bass. With the S23 Ultra, everything seems to be just completely like better, I guess better balanced. Like everything is perfectly balanced with the, the highs, the mids and the lows, but you're gonna get more of a better stereo sound in my opinion with the OnePlus 12. And also it has a, a good loudness. I, it might be just slightly, the, the S23 may be slightly louder, slightly, but that stereo, that nice full stereo sound, I get that from the OnePlus 12, but that's just to my ears. Number 12, the OnePlus 12 has better battery life. Now keep in mind, I know this has a bigger battery at 5,400 milliamp hours. This only has 5,000, but man, I could easily get two full days and up to 11 hours of screen on time. I mean, seriously, this battery on this device is ridiculous. And basically, if you don't even use the phone, you don't use any battery. Because I've gone eight to nine hours and my phone stayed at 100%. You know, I didn't use or I may use it for less than five minutes. I basically didn't use any battery. Everybody knows with a Samsung device, whether you use it or not, you're going to drain battery. Now, this one doesn't drain battery like, you know, my Note 20 Ultra. <laughs> now, I don't know about the 21 and the 22 because I never had those devices. Well, I only had it as 21 for a short time. But the Samsung devices have always been known to drain battery, whether you, whether you use them or not. But this is definitely better. But... This one plus 12 is killing the S23 Ultra and overall battery life. I could easily get through a day with the S23 Ultra, but I'm talking two full days with moderate to heavy usage and a hundred percent brightness and quad HD resolution and 120 Hertz refresh rate and always on display on. That's the one plus 12. Next. And I just mentioned this 13 has a larger battery. So that's good. More battery, more battery life. Number 14 with the one plus 12, you're getting Ram expansion. So basically you could expand the Ram. Okay. Right now I could expand the Ram. I've expanded the Ram on this device up to 12 gigs. So it already comes with 16 gigs, right? So when I, push the thing up to eight, I mean the 12 gigs. Now I got 28 gigs of RAM that I'm using on this device. So everything stays open all the time. Now I know for some of you that's complete overkill, but man, it's a nice option to have because even my Vivo has expand exp, um, RAM expansion too. And I like that. I just like options. People, when you get a smartphone, you want to have as many options as possible. Now, I'm not talking about everybody, but when you think about it, think about how much money you're spending on these devices. And you're not the kind of you may not be that kind of person that's changing devices every single year. You're the kind of person you want to get a top notch device that has everything is just top notch. Everything is great. You want to keep it for a long time. You want as many options as possible with that device, especially for as much as you're paying for it. So I like the fact that you could expand the RAM, of course. Whatever you get on Samsung is whatever you get. 12 gigs, that's it. Okay, now for most people, 12 gigs is going to be fine. But keep in mind, that's not even the base model for the S23 Ultra. The base model is only eight. So if you want 12, you got to pay more money. This comes standard 12. And then on top of that, 
You don't have to buy a larger variant when it comes to RAM. All you just got to do is expand the RAM. The only way you're going to uh, ramp this thing up anymore, if you say you want more internal storage. So say if you want to go from 256 to 5 to 512 or from 512 to a terabyte. But you don't really need the RAM. You just want the storage. But right now I'm using 28 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of internal storage. So I love that. All right. Number 15. The OnePlus 12 has better performance. Now, I'll say this. The last S23 Ultra I had had performance issues. It gave me problems. Now, that Lockstar, that, that's frustrating. That's giving me problems. I don't know what that's all about. But my always-on display is all set, so I ain't got to worry about that, really. But this the performance on this device has been night and day better than what I had before. I don't know what was wrong with that device. Maybe I got a bad device. But the performance is better. But with the OnePlus 12, this phone is so much more responsive and just smoother. And I love that. Now, they're both probably equally fast, but just the smoothness of the OnePlus 12 and the responsiveness to the touch when I touch it. Sometimes with the S23, I got to touch apps twice. I don't like that. That's annoying. When I hit something the first time, it's, it's supposed to work and respond and, and I want I want fast, quick res, um, responsiveness. I'm getting that with the OnePlus 12. I'm not getting that with the mm -hmm. S23 Ultra. But performance on the S20 Ultra mm -hmm. is great. But I like the performance better on the OnePlus 12 because of the responsiveness and the smoothness mm -hmm. of the software. Number 16. The OnePlus 12 has faster wired charging. 100 watts okay and it comes in the box the charging brick comes in the box you can go from five percent to 100 percent in 28 minutes you know you ain't doing that with the s20 ultra it is not happening you're only getting 45 watts and that's going to take you a little over an hour which i think is ridiculous for samsung to be still charging that slow now some people don't care about that they say oh battery degradation Listen, I've got other phones, the Mi 11 Ultra, Vivo X and O. I'm not having no battery issues. And I charge them, those devices fast all the time. And I'm still getting great battery life. With the v Vivo X, Vivo X Note, I'm still getting two full days. Mi 11 Ultra, I'm getting a day and a half. And I've had that Mi 11 Ultra now for over two years. Coming up on a year with the Vivo X Note, but both of them are still giving me great battery life. So that battery degradation it's caps. It just is. Okay. When it comes to charging, this definitely should be charging faster than 45 watts. It should be a half an hour, just like the one plus 12. So 5% to hundred percent, 28 minutes. I love that. Number 17, the one plus 12 has faster wireless charging. Okay. 50 watt wireless charging. So you can go from 5% to 100% in 44 minutes. Now, I know there's some people out there don't care about wireless charging. I do. Okay, you don't have to care about it. I do. I love just being able to take my phone, sit it up on the thing, and just keep it moving. I don't have to plug it in. I don't have to worry about the charging port going bad or anything like that. And I know with all these phones, there hasn't been any issues with charging port as far as I've heard. I know that's been a big issue for the LG phones. But still, I'd like the convenience of wireless charging. So 15 watts on the S23 Ultra takes you well over two hours, 44 minutes, 50 watts on the OnePlus 12. Next, the OnePlus 12 has faster reverse wireless charging. Power share, 10 watts. You're only getting 4.5 watts with the S23 Ultra. Number 19 transition effects now this is something that you don't get on samsung devices that's something that's a software thing they could put that on it let me show you what i'm talking about for those of you that may not know so basically you hold down the screen pops up you see here you'll see some choices down here you scroll and you'll see transition effects right here so you hit that you got all these different choices you got roll 
which is what I'm using right here. See that? See that transition effect? Everything rolls. Whoops. I didn't mean to do that. Okay. It's still there. So let me go to cube. See, when you go to cube, that's what you get. Mm -hmm. When you go to flip. Okay. When you go to grid. When you go to this one. So you, you have these options. Now roll is my favorite. So I'm going to stay with that one. But I, I just like having that option. I just love having that option. That's something you don't get with the S23 Ultra. And number 20 in my last point. You get system cloner. So basically two phones in one. Let me show you what, what I mean by that. For those of you that may not be familiar with it. Go, let me see. System cloner. Where are you? Let me see. Because I typed in here just the other day. Hold up. I'll, I'll type it up here real quick. System cloner. Here we go. All right. So it's right down here. I keep forgetting it's in security. See, two phones in one. So enter your thing. All you do is use your fingerprint. And now. Hold up. It must be my other finger. Hold up. So I haven't used this that much. I think it's this finger. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> so as you can see, I have a whole different type of screen here. So basically two phones in one. So say if somebody need to use my phone, I got a bunch of sensitive stuff on my phone. All I do is use my other fingerprint. It'll take me right to the screen. And as you can see, I don't have anything set up on here like nothing. It'll just be like starting like a new phone. But as soon as I turn it off and go back to my thumbprint and swipe up, it goes right back to, to my original. This is the way it was. So I love that Samsung don't offer nothing like that. They offer nothing like that. Now they got secure folder, which is nice. And I like that, but this also has secure folder too. It's not called secure for it's called private, private safe. And they also have, um, you can hide your apps. You can lock your apps. They just give you so much, so many options when it comes to security, but this is no slouch when it comes to security either, but that two phones in one, I like that. That's something Samsung should consider putting on their devices. So those are the 20 reasons to me why the OnePlus 12 is a better device than the S23 Ultra. Like I said, some of you made it all the way to the end. Some of you stopped early in this because in your mind, in your opinion, Samsung is the best at everything. And ain't nothing wrong with, you know, you feeling that way. But don't hate on me because my opinion is different than yours. So. Thank you all for taking the time to view this content. I do appreciate it. Hope everybody out there is staying safe and staying well. And I'll check you guys out in the next one. Peace.